let's go with Rudolf Hess. I didn't meet Hess until he came to Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. And the first time I met him was in the course of a conversation that I had with Goering and uh, Douglas Kelly, the psychiatrist. Right. And Kelly told Goering that he had tried to talk to Hess, but that Hess had amnesia and couldn't uh, recall anything, didn't know anybody. And Goering then volunteered to talk to Hess, saying, remember they were in solitary confinement. So he said he wanted to talk to Hess, and maybe he could help Hess regain his, his memory. So he took Goering to Hess, and Hess is a complete blank. And he, he, he played the act very well. He didn't know Goering at all. And Goering was extremely annoyed. That was Kelly. Kelly told me that this is not a real amnesia because he had deliberately talked himself into not remembering. And people who have gone through a catastrophic experience, who don't really want to remember the tragedy that they've seen, can actually shut it out of their minds. I don't want to talk about this. This is a it makes me sick to talk about it. Right, right. And if you keep giving that answer often enough and long enough, then you really talk yourself into forgetting. And that's what Hess had done. But when time came that he wanted to talk, it all came back. Well, Kelly then thought we ought to give the Rorschach test to Hess. And Hess could speak fluent English. But Kelly said, I still want you to be with me. Um, we'll conduct the, the interview, the test in English, but just in case he needs an interpreter, and then you'll be with me. So I actually was a bystander. I didn't participate in that test. In other tests, I did. I would ask the question, interpret. <clears throat> so then after that, I would go back and see Hess on a number of occasions, just to chat with him and get to know him better. All right, now, with that relationship established, let me say that I'm one of the people who is convinced that Hess flew to England on Hitler's orders, that he knew exactly where he was going and what he was doing. And I based that on my interviews with Hess, and I based it on my talks with some of the other prisoners. Um, I'm rambling all over the place here and get it all together. Hitler exercised what is known as the Führer Prinzip, the principle of leadership which was typically Hitler. And the Führer Prinzip was that he never told A what B was doing, and B never was told what A was doing. Hitler gave everybody his job, but he didn't tell anybody else what that guy was going to do. That, that was one thing. And we kept hearing about the Führer Prinzip in the course of their defense. I didn't know about this because I wasn't informed. Uh, Hitler exercised the Führer Prinzip, and he merely told so-and-so what to do, but he didn't tell me that that's what so-and-so was doing. Okay. Um, in England at the time, it was a very strong pro-German, even pro-Nazi element, the Duke of Hamilton. So Hess's mission was to fly to Scotland, land on the Duke of Hamilton's estate, get to the Duke of Hamilton, and tell him that Germany was about to invade Russia, Soviet Union. If the British would just lie low, stay out of it, I mean, just don't do anything, don't attack us, and keep the Americans out of it, definitely. That would give the Germans an opportunity to invade the Soviet Union and create a bulwark between Western democracy and Eastern communism. So Hess's mission was to tell the Duke of Hamilton that the Germans were going to invade the Soviet Union, but that the British should lie low, keep the Americans out of it for that reason. Mm -hmm. So he ends up getting a Messerschmitt plane. And he flies to England going through all the radar. He's not detected. Somebody had to know he was coming. And somebody had to clear the skies for his approach. 
He landed by parachute, mm -hmm. about 20 yards from where he wanted to land. It was that, that well done. He was an experienced pilot. In fact, he and Goering always argued about who was a better pilot. Uh, Goering, of course, was an ace. Right. Hess was none. He landed on the Duke of Hamilton's estate, and a farmer with a pitchfork saw him land and thought the invasion had started and marched him off to the local constabulary. And the whole thing was blown. So, of course, under a great cover of secrecy, the British put Hess under arrest, put him in prison. They didn't allow us to interview him. Right. Nobody was allowed to talk. Um, Churchill was smart enough to know that if the Americans, maybe the American media, find out that there is a pro-German element in, German, uh, in, in England, uh, the Americans might not be so hot about getting in, in the support of England, getting involved in World War II. That was one of their, their thinking, keep the Americans out of it, as long as we were kept in the dark. So they kept Hess for four and a half years incognito. Now Hess arrives in Nuremberg, and he's, a, he's very flaky, his personality. Uh, you never dared ask him, how are you today? Could he tell you? He had something wrong with him all the time. I mean, he was a hypochondriac. I think he had just about every doctor in Germany check him out. He was really not a died-in-the-wool Nazi. That did not motivate Hess. What motivated Hess was his great admiration and affection for Hitler. Hess was um, a personality, he was not a leader at all. He was a follower, and he needed a father image. He was born in Egypt. He was 15 years old before he ever came and set foot in Germany, of German parents. His parents were diplomats in Egypt. And he came to Germany to be a student under the tutelage of uh, Haushofer, the German economist. And Haushofer taught him, and eventually Hess became involved in the, the Hitler movement and became one of the staunchest followers. Because Hitler to him was the father figure. He admired, loved Hitler. He would die for Hitler. Not necessarily for Germany, not for the Nazi cause, but for Hitler. That was, that was the connection. Mm -hmm. He had more or less given up his family until after he went to prison. I mean, he sacrificed his family relationship to, to follow Hitler. So Hitler was, was his family, was, was his everything. So he lived to be 93 and then died in, in Potsdam. But on the basis of what I said earlier, uh, my talks with Hess, knowing how Hitler operated, his pure principe concept of leadership. Don't tell that guy what this guy's going to do. Um, Hitler wrote in Mein Kampf that if Germany ever had to fight a war on two fronts again, Germany would lose that war. This is in Hitler's own opinion in Mein Kampf. So when he was ready to invade the Soviet Union, he couldn't afford to fight the Soviet Union and have the British, possibly the Americans, to fight on the other side. He had to get them out of it. So I'm convinced that Hitler sent Hess on a mission without telling the other Nazi leaders. They hinted at it, but they couldn't say for sure, yes, we know that he did it, but they fudged. Sure. So they wanted to be loyal, but at the same time they they wanted to let so I, I, my conclusion is Hitler sent Hess. When the mission failed and this farmer the pitchfork took Hess to the constabulary, uh, Hitler's explanation was that Hess was a traitor and he lost his mind and you lose your mind and then you fly a Messer Schmidt to England in the fog. I wouldn't mind losing my mind on those kids.